All right. Now that we have learned all the official ways to cover infinite limits, let's see how this can affect us in a day-to-day real-life word problem and applied example. So I have this example here. Scott, an urban planner, models the population, P of T, of his community in thousands, T years from now, given by the function, P of T equals 40T over T squared plus 10, minus 50 over T plus 1, plus 70. And we have three questions to go with this function here. What is the current population of the community? How much does the population actually change throughout the third year? Um, does it increase or decrease during that year? And part C, what population should Scott plan for in the long run? Now we're gonna do each of these separately, but before I show you them, I encourage you to pause the video and see if you can come up with the answers to these on your own. You will have word problems on your homework and ones that don't mimic this one exactly, so it's a good thing to know how much you can actually apply in a day-to-day real-life setting. And the first question I would encourage you to ask yourself is what do the variables stand for? What does T stand for? And what does P of T stand for? And that will help you not only answer these questions, but label them in the right manner. So here's the time to pause that video. Okay, before I focus on parts A, B, and C individually, let's look at what the variables stand for. So looking at T, we see that the problem says T years from now. Well, if T is representing years, then T is going to represent time. And anytime you see the T as a variable, it almost always represents time. The other thing that we need to know what is represented is the P of T, because that's what this whole function stands for. Well, the problem also states that population is P of T, but another important thing to know is this population is in thousands. So keep these things in mind when you're trying to answer part A, B, and C individually of this question. So again, P of T stands for population in thousands. Okay, let's focus on part A. What is the current population of the community? Well, that means we have to plug in something for T if we want to know the current population. Remember, T represents time in years. If we want to know the population five years from now, then we would just let T equals five. If we wanted to know the population one year from now, then we would substitute in T equals one. So one of the um, frequent things that people do incorrectly here is they substitute in one if they want the current population. But that is actually computing the population one year from now. If we want to know the population right now, then time actually hasn't advanced any, so we're going to substitute in zero for time, zero years from now. So P of zero equals 40 times zero over zero squared plus 10 minus 50 over zero plus one plus 70. And we're just going to simplify each of these fractions separately. And that's going to be a hint for other parts of this problem. So here I have 0 divided by 10 minus 50 divided by 1 plus 70. 0 divided by any number is 0 minus 50 plus 70. And so our final answer is 20. P of 0 is 20. Now, this is a word problem, so you need to label all of these answers. Well, what does this actually mean, 20 what? Well, we solve something for P, our population, so this 20 stands for a population. But remember, population is given in thousands. So you can say our population is 20,000. And, of course, this is people. Or you can actually convert it to a number, 20,000 people. Either one of these is the correct way to label this answer here. So if you ever want to know something right now, then you just substitute in t equals zero or your variable equals zero. So 
We have done Part A. Part B, how much does the population change during the third year, and is it increasing or decreasing at that time? So what most people do for this is they start off correctly, but they don't actually finish this problem. Well, if we want to know during the third year, then of course our time is going to equal three. So we substitute in three into our equation. 40 times 3 over 3 squared plus 10 minus 50 over 3 plus 1 plus 70. Now, I'm not going to work through all the steps to simplifying this because that is just an algebra problem, and I trust that you can do that from now. So I'm just going to skip through it. So when I plug in 3 to this equation, I have fractions. So I came up with a least common denominator of 38 giving me 24, 25 over 38. This is, of course, an applied problem, which is the only time decimals are actually better than fractions because I have to actually apply this. So my decimal approximation is this there, 63.8157, so on and so forth. But again, the question is, is what is this? What does this actually represent? Well, we were talking about population, in thousands. So our population at this time is 63,816. And I'm going to round up because I can't have 0.5 of a person. Now, this is not the actual correct answer to this problem. What we just found was what was our population at the end of the third year. So after three years, our population is 63,816 people. If we go back and look at the question, the question asks, how much does it change during the third year? So not at the end of the third year, but how much does it change during the third year? So we actually have to compare this to a different year. We actually have to calculate the population at the beginning of the third year and subtract the difference. So P of 3 gives us the amount of people that is at the end of the third year. Now we have to calculate how many people there were at the beginning of the third year. And we do that by just substituting in 2 for this. So P of 2 is the amount of people that I have at the end of the second year, or same thing, at the beginning of the third year. 40 times 2 over 2 squared plus 10 minus 50 over 2 plus 1 plus 70. Again, I'm going to skip through all the details, and we're going to come up to our um, answer of what the population was at the beginning of the third year. Okay, I've done all the work here. I've simplified it. I came up with the least common denominator, which gave me my overall fraction converting it into a decimal because it is an applied problem. So this tells me my population at the end of the second year, or the same thing, at the beginning of the third year, is 59,000 people. If I go back to my question, it asks how much does it change during the third year. So I take the amount of people that I had at the end of the third year, and I subtract the amount of people that I had at the beginning of the third year or at the end of my second year. Those numbers were 63,816 and 59,048 people, so I just need to subtract the difference. And that gives me an answer of 4,768. Again, this is an applied problem, so we need to label it, and this is our community has a difference of 4,768 people during the third year. Now, the last question that was asked here is, is our population increasing or decreasing? Well, since I subtract the end minus the beginning, and I came up with a positive number, that means I am increasing at this time. If I were to subtract and my answer would be negative, then I, of course, would be decreasing. So if the question asks, at the end of that year, then you would just plug in that number. But if I asked how much it changes during that year, 
you have to plug in the beginning and the end value and subtract the difference between the two. I'm going to split this video into two different videos just because of time constraints. So I'm going to stop this guy here, and when I come back, I will finish up part C of this example.